Good day, everyone. Welcome to watch the third video clip to review the GIS module in TBC. Today, we will harvest the field data and synchronize it back to the original GIS data source. In the last video, we passed the GIS schema to Trimble Access and started the field work. Now I have completed the job and I'm ready to wrap it up. Tap the menu and the job name. By changing the job status from new to complete, Trimble Access will start uploading the field data to Sync Manager automatically. The screen check mark is the sign of a successful upload. Coming back to the office, launch Trimble Sync Manager. Go back to the job list under this project. The job status has been updated. Tap on this row to open the job. You can see all the new field points listed. You can click Import to TBC if you still have the TBC project open. Otherwise, you can download the JXL and import it later. I will keep the existing projection. And I will choose No to keep the existing feature definitions since they are the same. Although points were collected with the feature codes, they are not processed yet. So go to the GIS tab and click Process Feature Codes. Check the JXL box, then click Process Source. I will not view the report this time. To see the features in the cleaner view, go to View Filter Manager and turn off the RTK vectors. Now you may highlight the features and check their properties. It's also a good time to modify the geometry or the attributes of the features. Sometimes users want to archive the precision info with the features. This info does not come from the points themselves, but the vectors where the points are derived from, such as the RTK vectors in my dataset and total station vectors. Usually, the GIS manager have some attribute fields pre-configured with the proper data type, so the precision metadata can reside there. To make this happen, click in some blank area in your view to clear the selection. Then click Map Metadata from the ribbon. Select the connection from the left side. TBC will detect qualified vectors and list available data on the right side. If you still have something selected in the plan view, this table will not pop up. Simply close the window, unselect everything, then reopen the command. I have predefined several numeric fields for feature type signal and street light. Click on the PDOP field. The properties that are using the same data type will be both now on the right side, indicating they are potential candidates. Scroll to the matching property items, select the one, then check the box of map all fields with the same name, and click 
add mapping. By checking the box, the PDOP fields from both streetlight and signal features are mapped. Also, once the PDOP field is mapped, it is no longer listed as an available field. We can now continue mapping the fields for HDOP, VDOP, horizontal accuracy or precision, and vertical accuracy slash precision. When the mapping is complete, close the window. This mapping relationship is stored within the TBC project, so you don't need to map it every time when new data comes back to this VCE. The last thing to do in the workflow is to write features to GIS. You may have everything selected in the project, but TBC will automatically ignore objects that don't match with the GIS schema. And any data that has been written to GIS from this project will show as linked. If you have changed the geometry or the attributes of a linked feature, you can check the box and rewrite it. TBC keeps the link memory within the VCE, so you won't see any duplication in that case. However, if you connect to the same GIS source from a different TBC project, this link is broken and you will see duplications. Hit OK. One feature failed. I will check the report. This failed feature will be reviewed in the end. For your clients, now they, they should be able to see the data in their GIS applications. Refresh the view to get the new data. The feature attributes are carried over. Notice that the metadata from the RTK vectors is also synchronized. A few more things before you go. Since TBC manages the GIS connection at project level, you may want to host your GIS data in just the one TBC project, meaning that new data or new jobs will always check in to the same VCE. Sometimes TBC fails to write features to GIS because the feature doesn't match with the GIS topographic definition. For example, in my project, I have a line-shaped landscape area. It is not qualified as a GIS polygon, so it cannot go back to GIS. You may encounter this error message trying to write features to GIS because, as for today, TBC doesn't support a geodatabase with attachment relationship class in it. Disable the attachment in your GDB and reconnect to the data source. The error message will be gone. Another potential headache is the feature class alias. Today, TBC reads the alias of a feature class and converts it to a feature definition code. When the alias is long, or not unique for each feature class, you may get a cumbersome feature code or potentially two different feature classes merged together. To avoid this issue, talk to the GIS manager and make the alias short and precise. 
This concludes the main workflow in the GIS module. Thank you for watching. See you next time.